Hello on full person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss the most incredible astronomical event that happened in the last few years once again. Here I'm talking about BOAT, the brightest of all times. The extremely bright and very powerful gamma ray burst that was detected on October 9th of 2022 by various gamma ray and X-ray telescopes, and even though it only lasted for 10 minutes, it was still detectable for 10 hours afterwards, despite being 2.5 billion light years away from us. But I guess more importantly, it was really the only such event in recent history that was powerful enough to affect the Earth's atmosphere, to physically blind various satellites for at least some time, and to basically produce emissions that we didn't even think were possible. Here's that famous picture I showed in some of the previous videos that kind of compares the amount of gamma rays emitted by this event compared to some of the previous record holders. And because this was basically the most powerful GRB ever detected, it naturally produced a lot of follow-up observations and a huge amount of studies. And in just the last year or so, so many unusual discoveries have already been made about this strange event. You can obviously find some of them in the description below, but today we're going to discuss one of the biggest ones so far. And one that even the astronomers were super shocked to find out about, because it basically didn't really make sense at first. But this new discovery potentially explains what we're actually seeing here and why it's so powerful. Although here I guess I have to start by mentioning that we still don't actually understand GRBs perfectly well. The assumption today is that these are based on the collapse of some kind of a massive star that basically turns into a black hole, and during this collapse, two jets going in separate directions and basically moving almost at the speed of light, first pierce through the star and then through all of the gas emitted by the star in the last few thousands of years to essentially produce all of the emissions we're observing. And so this was the basic assumption for a very long time. Interestingly enough, these particular events seem to produce some of the most powerful explosions possible in the entire universe. But exactly what happens in this jet, or exactly what produces all of this energy, has always been a bit of a mystery. But we know that there are at least a few types of GRBs out there, with some being long GRBs, usually lasting longer than 2 seconds, and some being short GRBs, as the name implies, usually less than 2 seconds and potentially produced by neutron star collisions. And to date, pretty much both examples have been discovered in various locations, and so far the observations have met the theoretical predictions. But naturally there are always some examples that just don't make sense, and this is one of those examples. Here we had an event that was much much longer and much more powerful than expected and created enough energy to affect a terrestrial planet 2.5 billion light years away from the collapsed star. And so obviously the question here was, ok so what's really happening? How is this even possible? Now if you watched some of the previous videos, you probably know that this was actually detected by so many different telescopes out there. And it was actually seen in a lot of different frequencies, not just in gamma rays. But because it was so powerful and because it was basically blinding to a lot of telescopes, it was also kind of challenging to analyze this event and to discover specific details. And so in one of the recent studies, Dr. Maria Ravazio and her team in Netherlands decided to analyze this again but use a slightly different statistical analysis in order to basically see some of the details that might have been missed. Now interestingly, back in the 90s, when some of the space telescopes became good enough to analyze GRBs, researchers initially thought that they're actually observing certain distinct lines inside of these GRBs that could potentially reveal exactly what's going on inside the jets and what produces most of this energy. But then the later analysis established that these were potentially statistical errors and in general the spectrum from GRBs should not actually contain any lines and should mostly be kind of smooth. Or basically if you were to look at it, it would not have anything standing out and would more or less resemble some kind of a curve. And this was more or less true for most of the GRBs discovered so far and for the statistical analysis used on them. But in this study, a different analysis was performed and something really bizarre was discovered in it. Here the data revealed an unusual spike. Now this actually did not make sense. It implied that this spike was produced by something very powerful and extremely specific and more importantly went against previous assumptions that such spikes should not be possible and should not exist. 
In other words, it suggested some kind of a powerful source inside the jets that was possibly previously ignored or possibly was just not visible because of the statistical analysis used. And so in this case, the scientists at first believed that maybe this was a mistake. But further analysis and further confirmations basically suggested that the spike was really there. And since the overall physics of GRBs is still actually kind of poorly understood, here discovering this could actually help us finally understand how these jets get so powerful and what exactly we're looking at. Now just to be clear, we actually still have no idea what drives these jets to become so powerful or what the main source of energy in these jets actually is. I mean, there are a lot of assumptions out there, but none of them so far have been very conclusive. As a matter of fact, exactly what these jets contain is also a bit of a mystery. But based on this discovery, it might not be a mystery anymore. And so normally, the light from such objects should not actually contain any spikes. Mostly because we don't actually expect specific atoms or specific molecules that would produce such unusual observations. And so most of this light should appear smooth and should resemble a kind of a curve. But more importantly, because the spike only appears at approximately 10 mega electron volts in strength, it potentially only has one single explanation. And here things get really interesting. This distinct bright narrow emission suggests only one source. And because it's so compact and so powerful, it suggests it has to be something super extreme, such as for example matter and antimatter which seems to be exactly what's happening here. So it turns out that when you have an electron and a positron annihilating together, they'll usually produce a gamma ray of an extremely specific energy. That energy is 511 kilo electron volts. However, if these electrons and positrons are moving toward us at approximately 99.99% .99 of the speed of light, all of this then becomes blue shifted toward us. And it actually starts to appear as if it's in much higher energy. Specifically, that energy then starts to appear closer to 10 to 12 mega electron volts. And that's basically what we're seeing here. We're looking at antimatter jet pointed directly toward us, produced entirely by an extremely thin and very compact line containing just positrons and electrons in a kind of a state of balance between creation and annihilation that seems to continuously produce a lot of energy at least during the brightest emission stage when this jet is super powerful. And because this only lasted for something like 400 seconds, it means that during those few minutes, this is when all of this matter and antimatter was constantly producing these super powerful emissions, with all of these powerful gamma rays then traveling for 2.5 billion light years and affecting the Earth's atmosphere. Which once again is kind of mind-blowing. But I guess the question here is, how is it that this hasn't been found until recently, and why is it that other scientists could not see this before? Well, as mentioned, it's because they actually used a kind of a standardized statistical analysis, where the actual gamma ray bursts are not expected to have lines, and so any potential lines are smoothed over in order to form a very gentle curve. But because of this discovery, it potentially suggests that a lot of other similar events could have been missed before, and the previous assumption that GRBs don't usually have lines was clearly incorrect. And so maybe even those detections in the early 90s could have been showing us something that was actually real. And that of course means that a lot of GRB detections from the last few decades might have to be reanalyzed in order to see if they also contain unusual lines and in order to detect potential new mysteries of maybe some other ways jazz can be produced. But at least in this one case, we know that the jets seem to be entirely powered by matter and antimatter annihilation. The phenomenon so powerful that it creates energy that can travel for billions of light years and have tremendous effects on objects really far away. And so because this was such an unusual and such a surprising discovery, and the discovery that was only made just a few days ago, it means that in the next few years, we'll probably be making even more unusual discoveries in regards to these strange powerful events, maybe even finally solving their mystery once and for all. And so right now there's a really high chance that more similar lines are going to be discovered in a lot of other GRBs, but in those cases they might not be as prominent because they're just not as bright. As a matter of fact, the only reason this is so easily visible is because it was so powerful. 
but these electron-positron pair annihilations should technically be visible in other GRBs as well. And so once the scientists discover something else about this event, or potentially discover something else super exciting about other GRBs, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out more videos about this event in the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.